Tonight, Premier Ford is planning a major shakeup of his government tomorrow. What we've learned about a big cabinet shuffle planned for tomorrow morning, including some large changes coming to a couple of ministries. Plus... I'm not particularly happy with it. Like, honestly, this is not where I wanted to be. Decision night for the TDSB. Trustees are voting on cuts to deal with a $68 million budget shortfall. And... Birds are like my number one phobia, so this was kind of a nightmare come true. Caught on tape terrorizing a neighborhood. Why these angry birds are making it a bit harder to get around Liberty Village. Good evening, I'm Mike Wise. We begin with a story you'll want to watch for tomorrow. A major shakeup is coming to Premier Doug Ford's cabinet. The shuffle comes amid a series of poor polls, barely a year into the PC government's mandate. Multiple government sources tell CBC News they expect the shuffle to be significant. With anywhere from six to ten ministers on the move, the sources predict Ford will increase the size of two of the cabinets by, or will, by, by breaking up at least two ministries, children, community and social services, as well as health and long-term care. That would make room for some PC backbenchers to get into cabinet. Now, there are also questions as to whether Finance Minister Vic Fideli will stay in his post. A swearing-in ceremony for the new ministers is scheduled for 10.30 at Queen's Park. Well, parents and students will soon be finding out which programs the Toronto District School Board had to cut. After months of debates, trustees voting in the last hour to pass their budget tonight. Our Natalie Nanowski was at the meeting and joined us now live with the details. Natalie. Mike, they just voted about 40 minutes ago to pass the budget. It was 18 in favor, four against. But of course, you will remember that this was a long and hard process. They had to figure out how to account for a $67 million shortfall. I'm not particularly happy with it. Like, honestly, this is not where I wanted to be. But the board says it had to be done. A big chunk of the cuts will be made to positions within the TDSB's head office. So that staff will go back to working inside schools, likely bumping junior employees out of jobs. Another big cut is to student support services. About 20 positions for social workers and speech pathologists will be eliminated. As we try to promote mental health and well-being, um, here we are cutting some of the direct supports that uh, uh, help young people who have these particular challenges. There has been a lot of work done in this and thought gone into this process. But some parents and teachers wanted the board to vote no. You run a deficit to create an alternative budget, it's like should go away and say this is the budget that we need and encourage other school boards across the province to do so. They are being very naive. I think that if we don't pass this budget, then that we will probably take it over a supervisor and a supervisor will not consult parents. A supervisor will not consider our multi-year strategic plan. Music programs will be slashed by about 25 percent, but instructors worry there could be more cuts to come. This is only the first step in potentially future years of eliminating music entirely. Going to be happening over a two year period. The first year, it's going to be about $46 million. The second year, $21 million. And in that second year, there is going to be some reinvestment into some of the services and programs that were cut, but only about $6 million. Mike? Okay, thank you, Natalie. A chaotic scene unfolded in East York overnight. It started when a man crashed a stolen taxi then forced his way into a home on Torrance Avenue. That's when he then attempted to light the home on fire. The SIU is now looking into this bizarre incident. Greg Ross spoke to the homeowner and takes us through what happened. Police tell me it actually started several blocks away from here when a man stole a taxi. That was near the Roblin Avenue and Plains Road area. Moments later, police say that man was involved in an accident near Pape Avenue and O'Connor Drive. The man didn't stop there. At this point, it's not clear how he ended up at this home near Pape and Torrance Avenue, but it was the beginning of a terrifying experience for the man that owns this home. It wasn't just a knock. They were trying to beat down this door. John Bartley says he was watching TV just after 10 o'clock last night when he heard the banging on his front door. I was assuming that maybe somebody was hurt and was looking for help. But he says when he opened the door, he instead found a man acting erratically. He just barred it in and... I just told him to leave. He's telling me to get lost. 
So I, I think, well, one of us is going to go. The man forced his way into the kitchen, where he found a large fork used for barbecuing and threatened John with it. He literally grabbed that barbecue fork from right there off the wall. Mm -hmm. And where were you when that happened? Standing right where you were. So you, that, was, that was the end of that? Well, yeah. I was a little too close to the guy with a weapon, so, you know, I figured the best, get out of the Dodge, phone yeah. the police. Let them deal with it. As John made a beeline for the front door, the man barricaded himself in his bedroom. Eventually, police would have to break down the door to get him out. I'm going to guess it didn't look like this before he went in there? No, I'm a little bit cleaner housekeeper than that, you know. When he returned to his home today, John found his bedroom destroyed. Just basically tore everything apart. Dressers, mirrors, windows, broke the windows to try to, catch, try to start my bed on fire. In addition to that, John says police investigators rearranged some of his furniture, leaving him with quite a mess to clean up. But first, he's hoping to catch up on some missed sleep. To make matters worse, you, you, not only does somebody come and take, take over your home and then the police have to investigate, but you have to sleep in your car. Well, the thing is, my keys, my wallet, everything was in the house. I wasn't allowed to come in. Police say they did attempt to negotiate with the man before forcing their way into the bedroom. They say at some point the man suffered injuries and had to be taken to the hospital, and that's why the SIU has taken over the investigation. Greg Ross, CBC News, Toronto. A man is dead after a shooting near Queen and Kennedy in Brampton last night. I heard this shot, and I, I thought like a Toronto one like a few days ago, and people are still celebrating, but uh, I definitely heard like four straight shots. Police say they got that call about a shooting around 11 o'clock. They found a 20-year-old man who'd been shot. They rushed into hospital, but he later died. This is Peel's seventh homicide of the year. And while police continue to search for a fourth suspect after Monday's shooting at the Raptors Championship Parade, word tonight of another violent attack, a stabbing that took place around the same time. Toronto police releasing this image of a man they're looking for, described as being in his mid-20s with a medium build. He's wearing a black sweater with a red and yellow design and black pants. Now, he apparently got into an altercation with a group of men near Young and Dundas. Police say he stabbed three men and a boy with a knife. They are all still in serious condition. Thousands of people were nearby watching the Raptors rally at Young Dundas Square. Police would like to hear from anyone who might have captured video footage of the area at the time of the stabbing. Colette Kennedy's here with her first look at the forecast. And the last full day of spring is going to be just like the rest of the spring. Wet. <laughs> yeah. You know, Mike, it is pretty fitting. I think that we are going to send spring off in a way that it's quite comfortable, which is kind of wet and just a little bit cooler after such a nice day today with, hey, even a little bit of humidity, right? But we do have a wet day tomorrow, at least off and on. We'll be seeing the showers. Doesn't matter because Friday, it hasn't changed. Summer begins Friday, 11.54 a.m. And the weekend outlook, I don't know if you can tell that, sand and a pail and some sunshine yes the point is it looks good for the weekend all right coming through into tomorrow morning we'll start to see some lighter showers developing getting a little bit heavier at times but kind of coming in waves and somewhat scattered as i say so you could get a pocket into the early afternoon just a little bit heavier and then into the evening this will be clearing out of here so it is at least a one day only event 17 degrees the temperature overnight tonight so pretty mild with that cloud cover a little bit cooler because of the winds too coming in from the north northeast tomorrow and those will be gusting 30 40 kilometers an hour but that weekend looks good and I'm going to tell you all about it coming up Mike. Okay thanks Colette. You're welcome. Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders co-hosted the service's annual pride reception tonight. I think the fact that uh, we've got a law enforcement agency that opens our headquarters and people are coming in is a huge testament to where we have moved to. We still have a lot of growing and developing and so I'm excited about what the future has and it's a matter of continuing the conversations which is what we're doing. Police invite the LGBTQ community to come out to police headquarters every year to help celebrate Pride. The month-long celebration culminates this weekend with the Trans March on Friday, the Dyke March on Saturday, and the big Pride Parade down Young Street on Sunday. Any dive bombs people that come mostly down the stairs. It has no mercy. It just it really like dives down and you can hear it like hit people's head in the back of their head so it, it really goes down with force <laughs> watch your head if you're walking around liberty village red wing blackbirds are once again on the defensive they've been caught on camera how residents are dealing with the aerial attacks coming up
They're finally learning when the man accused in the Young Street van attack will go to trial. Alex Manassian was in a Toronto court today where he learned his trial will be by judge alone next February. Now that is something his defense team had asked for. There was concern Manassian wouldn't be able to get a fair trial in Toronto. His lawyer, Boris Tensky, had put forward a motion to have the trial moved to another location, but he says that's no longer necessary with a judge alone trial. Manassian is facing 10 counts of first-degree murder and 16 counts of attempted murder for that attack which took place in April of last year. Well, pink slips went out to more than 400 health sector workers today. Another 409 vacant positions will be eliminated as the government moves ahead with consolidating 14 local health integration networks, Cancer Care Ontario, eHealth Ontario, and some other agencies into a new, larger organization to be called Ontario Health. The government describes the jobs being cut as being back office administrative positions. Premier Ford repeatedly promised during the election campaign that not a single person would lose their jobs under his government. However, that message has recently shifted to no frontline person will lose their job. Well, it's the time of year if you live anywhere near some birds who are feeling protective of their nets. Well, you got to keep your eyes on the sky. There's a stretch of Liberty Village where residents have become the targets of some angry dive-bombing birds. And of course, they're catching those attacks on video. Angelina King explains. They're calling him Dive Bomb Dave. While the red-winged blackbird has become a bit of a celebrity in Liberty Village... Everyone has uh, met him once now. He's not a popular one, unrelentingly attacking people, their pets, their kids, anyone who gets too close to his nest. When you're walking down that street, take cover because you never know, he flies at you fast and he can really do some damage. If you see a blackbird coming right to your face, it is scary. Uh, well, we sat out there for about an hour last night and we saw at least 20 or 30. And what are people's reactions? Uh, some people scream and go running. I saw one woman actually run into the street and almost get hit by a car, so it's kind of dangerous. Uh, there he is now. And word is, there are at least two more like him. Birds are like my number one phobia, so this was kind of a nightmare come true. Megan Evans says she's traumatized and spoke with us under one condition, that we stay far away from the birds. He came out of nowhere, like honestly, I didn't really see it. I just felt it. I felt a beak. I felt like the little claws and yeah, it was pretty freaky. And by the time I looked up, he was gone. Did it hurt? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That was yesterday. Today? <laughs> I took an Uber to work. It cost me $2.50 to take like a two minute ride down the street. Yeah, I'm a little nervous and I still have this as my shield for when I'm out and about. <laughs> Last year, signs were put up near Queen's Key and Spadina warning residents of the birds. Experts say this species is more aggressive right now because it's nesting season and says the birds are just trying to raise a family. These guys are just trying to protect their nest and they're trying to protect their space. They are really, really aggressive, partly because they have many nests in the same area. And so they have to protect it not only from predators, it will look at us like a predator, but also from other males that are trying to invade that territory. Take a look at this. Somebody has written a message on the sidewalk in chalk saying, watch out for the bird, run. Now experts say if you do see these birds, it's best to steer clear, stay calm. And remember, we are in their habitat. Residents will have to be dealing with this for a little while longer. Nesting season ends at the end of August. Angelina King, CBC News, Toronto. Well, Stats Canada confirming today what anyone who shops for food already knows. Grocery prices have skyrocketed in the last year, especially when it comes to vegetables. Magda Gabrisalase has more now on what's behind the increase. Thank you. When it comes to buying groceries, shoppers have noticed a difference. Where the prices are going up, you know, compared to a few years ago. I have noticed definitely a huge price increase in some vegetables like I remember like two weeks ago I was buying celery and usually celery is like $2.99 it was $5.99. This St. Lawrence market vendor says it's not just celery. Across the board he says the price of produce is way up. Brussels sprouts another item over a hundred dollars a case were normally 35 40 even 45 dollars max. This week for example green beans. Green beans are usually about 40 dollars a case Today, they're $95 a case. It's 
certain prices are ridiculous now. Today, Stats Canada said that the cost of fresh vegetables has gone up by 16.7 percent compared to last year. And at least one expert we spoke to says the weather has a lot to do with that. Mike Von Masso is a food economist with the University of Guelph. What we normally see at this uh, in in the winter months is higher fruit and vegetable prices as we're as we're importing that decrease over time towards uh, April, May, June. And what's happened this year is that decrease hasn't happened. We've had bad weather in several places that's delayed uh, crop and uh, and tightened supply. And so we we haven't seen the prices come down like we used to. Uh, like we usually do. And this vendor says he is feeling the pinch because of that. For myself, profit margin, there's no profit. It's The prices are so high, you can only get so much on stuff. People only pay so much for stuff. So I'm not making my profits way down. Still, these shoppers won't cross vegetables off their grocery list. Uh, stop to uh, get creative with it, I guess. Magda Gebrasilasi, CBC News, Toronto. It was a hot and humid day in the city. I wasn't complaining. Temperatures finally hitting the seasonal mark. Hopefully you got out to enjoy it. We do have some rain coming our way. Call it is back after the break with your extended forecast. The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. The Blue Jays trying for just one win against the Angels after losing the first two games of their series. They showed some signs of a fight down 3-0. Rowdy Velez helps tie the game in the second, this three-run shot to center field. But Mike Trout did him one better. Bases loaded in the fourth. He hits his second home run of the game. This one, a grand slam. Angels go on to beat the Jays 11-6. They've now lost seven in a row at home. Colette is back with their extended forecast, so showers for the last day of spring, but the summer's starting on a good note. It is, and isn't that nice to see? I mm. think we, we basically had about one good weekend in spring where we had dry conditions and sunshine, but even just the first weekend of summer is looking like it's going to be dry and sunny, so I'm liking the looks of it. Uh, as for what's happening for us, so through the overnight hours, some of that cloud cover building back in, showers developing, morning commute may be a little bit wet, probably not too intense at that point, and then it builds in a little bit coming in some waves and somewhat scattered in nature and then moving back out tomorrow evening so into the early evening still a chance for some showers but then we'll see not only the rain moving out but the clouds will start to move out as well as we get through the overnight Thursday high pressure builds back in and that is what's setting us up for really quite a nice day into Friday the first day of summer keep saying over and over it starts at 11:54. I think we're just all so excited about it in terms of the rainfall accumulation, we might see the potential is there for locally amounts around the GTA to see up to 15 to 20 millimeters back towards southwestern Ontario, kind of that corridor, roughly 15 to 20 millimeters as well. And you can see this particular model wants to give some heavier rain, so locally there around southern portions of the Golden Horseshoe. So just be prepared for that from Hamilton around through Niagara Falls, St. Catherine area. Back towards southwestern Ontario overnight tonight with some of these rain showers and then through tomorrow afternoon, those winds pretty early in the day changing to the north and getting a little bit breezy temperatures just a little bit cooler from where they were today with the highs in the low 20s and a look at the lows overnight tonight around the GTA with that cloud cover 16 to 17 degrees it kind of holds things a little on the mild side and then tomorrow afternoon this is why yeah a little bit chillier than what we experienced today a little bit below seasonal in terms of our values but it doesn't matter we're going to see things starting to heat up as we get towards the weekend so after tomorrow Friday, 22 degrees, mostly sunny skies, and then dry conditions. Let me say that again, dry conditions into Saturday. Sunshine, 25 for the high, probably a little more cloud cover into Sunday. Mostly sunny, getting a little bit warmer, getting a little more humid too as we head towards the beginning of next week. That brings up the chance for seeing some thunderstorm development and the high nearly 27 degrees, probably feeling like we're at 30 or in the low 30s though after the weekend. So the weekend really looks nice, Mike. Welcome to summer. Thanks a lot, Colin. You're welcome. 
For years, Canada Blood Services is trying to get more diverse donors to sign up to their stem cell registry without much luck. Coming up, how one man is trying to change that. The main thing is awareness, and that's people don't people think it's really painful to donate, but that's not the case. A stem cell transplant can treat more than 80 diseases and disorders, but some ethnic groups are less likely to find a donor. That's because Canada Blood Services doesn't have a lot of diversity on their stem cell registry. Tilly Simmons spoke to one Toronto man who is trying to change that. You're my hero, man. Thank you. Tom Wong regularly organizes blood drives like this one at his downtown office because he knows the difference donors can make. There's all the the donations from these folks out here who help with all the blood products that I needed why I fought. But a couple years ago, Wong needed a different kind of donation to win his battle. The CBC first spoke to him in 2015, a year after being diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. He needed a stem cell transplant to survive. We're almost looking for your genetic twin. Canada Blood Services says if family members aren't a match, people from the same ethnicity are the next best bet. They share many of the same genes needed for success, but out of the stem cell registry's 450,000 donors, about 70% are Caucasian, about 7% are Asian, less than 1% are black or Aboriginal. What we're finding is that we need to get out and raise more awareness in diverse communities. People are being diagnosed with life-threatening diseases every day, and we need to make sure that their donor is on the registry for them. Wong has taken on that challenge since his diagnosis. He speaks at schools and community events to try and create a more diverse registry. Some of it is just exposure. Some of them is, it is a cultural um, uh, adverse idea, which is pretty much unfounded. Yeah, the main thing is awareness, and that's people don't people think it's really painful to donate, but that's not the case. In the end, Wong couldn't find his own match in Canada, but through an international database, he did find a miracle. It was like a hallelujah moment where um, I found out that my donor um, was actually a woman from Germany, and that was amazing. How crazy is that based on everything that you've heard up until this point? So crazy, um, but, and, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't negate the need for that diverse mix still because the, the, the stats do say um, that your best chance is within your own ethnicity. So healthy now, Wong continues to fight. I'm not going to stop. This is um, dear to me and this is a, whatever weakness this created, it kind of made me stronger. Taylor Simmons, CBC News, Toronto. Great initiative. Well, before we go, tomorrow is Anna Maria Tremonti's final day hosting The Current on CBC Radio 1. There's a special final broadcast planned in the atrium of our broadcasting centre. You can listen to it tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. on CBC Radio 1. See you back here tomorrow night at 11. Good night.